Hi guys, we're still on with a trip. Mr. Musinguzi, follow him. Okay guys, you're most welcome to Mr. Musinguzi's YouTube channel. What we have learned today, I've been hearing about Omsaija Tayangwa. What I'm about to tell you, the word Thor means festival. The word about Thor means intelligent people and smart. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So we have come to one of the most prestigious places in Toro Kingdom and this is the palace, the Toro Palace. If you've been to Toro and you've been to the palace, you know how beautiful it is. You can see the view when you're at the palace, you can be able to see the entire city, the entire Toro city just right behind me there. Yeah. And uh, when you come to Fort Porto, we've been told that touring the palace is only 2,000 shillings. So it's very, very, very affordable compared to the places, other places that we've been to. And I'm going to be showing you just a view of what you can see when you are right here at the top of Fort Porto at the palace, what you can be able to see so that you, when you come here, you know what to look out for and you know what to come and see in Fort Porto town. So let's go on tour. Just as we were getting excited to tour the palace, we were shocked by the news that here at the palace, uh, there is no much to see. Only we receive people here. So we were like, what happens next? We're moving around and taking some pictures around here. So we didn't get the opportunity to enter the palace, but we got the opportunity to learn some history about Toro Kingdom as he elaborated. As you know, we have got four kingdoms in Uganda here. We have got Bunyoro, uh, Buganda, Bunyoro, Toro here, and Soka Kingdom. But among all those four kingdoms, Toro Kingdom here is the youngest kingdom. Uh, Toro was founded around 1819. And Toro broke away from Bunyoro Star Kingdom. Uh, Toro was part of Bunyoro Star Kingdom, but there was a complaint that Bunyoro was too far for the services which the people here. Around 1830, when the king of Bunyoro Star Kingdom, King Chiebambe Kasagama Nyamutkura, he sent one of his prince, Prince Ori Mikaboyo the first, to come and represent him here. But when Prince Kaboyo reached here, he was convinced by elders and chiefs in this place that he rebelled against his father, he became their king. He offered service near the people here. And he was convinced. And he rebelled against his father and declared himself a king in this place. But after the Romans translated out of this place, there was a sister who turned around uh, by the name of Mpanja. She got information that her brother must be sent by his father to his work as a son has been declared into the king. Now King Kasagama had nothing to do, only to leave his son to reign this place as an independent kingdom. So after Prince Oli Mikaboyo and his supporters, they had to sit and find the name of the new kingdom, which is different from that one of the North Kitara kingdom. And that time in this place, only there were two tribes were staying in here, only Banyoro and Batorobe tribes. And then the city majority of Yabatoro is why the Hino became Toro Kingdom. But originally, Yabatoro was a Banyorobe tribe. But the tribe of Batoro came in during the reign of Batre's dynasties in the time of King Yudahura. What I'm trying to tell you, but the word Toro means festival. Um, um, Toro. Festival. Um, Toro. <laughs> Yes, Toro, Omtoro. Uh, it's why you're here, here. 
uh, you might find people they have the, like a festival. Said Tulham Toro. Yes, festival in our language. So and uh, the word Batoro means intelligent people are smart. Yeah, those ones. And when Kawe came after the battle against his father, when we were looking for the name, among those people who were looking for the name, majority were those people intelligent people. And the kingdom became Toro Kingdom, which is a festival kingdom. Festival intelligence. Uh, after God the name Toro, only me and the supporters, they went and construct their first palace of Toro in Kasese district, in a place called Karsandara. Have you ever been to Kasese? Yeah. Which, uh, which means the first palace of Toro was built in Kasese in a place called Karsandara. Because that time Kasese was part of Toro kingdom. So Kaboya Rangers in Kasese is where he died from. He was buried in the new district of Nyangabu. Little sub county in Kagoma village. That was around 18, Skiste. He served the Torah for 30 years. And he was succeeded by his son, uh, Kazan Arhaga. But Kazan Arhaga, he succeeded his father, Olim Kaboyo, when he was very an old man. And most of his subjects went in favor of an old king. So they deposited him in the favor of his younger brother, Neka Kasunga, who don't became the king of Torah. But also Neka Kasunga served the very short period of two years. Also he was disposed by his younger brother Kato Kidi, assisted by Masonara forces from Buganda's king, Walugembe Mutesa I. Walugembe Mutesa was the king of Buganda. They wanted to give assistance to the Kato Kidi of Toro. So they came here, they fought Neka Kasunga, they defeated him and exiled him from Boga Zaire. Now Kato Kidi became the king after good assistance from Walugembe of Buganda. But also Katol Kid did not last long. After sister Dimad put him to power, those Masonara forces left him and went back to Uganda. And Katol Kid became weak. And the positive king, his brother, Neka got information that Masonara forces has already gone back. So Neka came back and fought his brother. He defeated him and they took over the kingship as the king of Toro for the second time. By the time Neka came back for the second time as the king of Toro, he offended King Kavalega the king of Bunyoro. Uh, when he called out his men uh, to raid Kavalega's cattle. And Kavalega got the sent his army to capture him, take him to his court in Bunyoro Kitara Kingdom. But Nyeka, the king of Toro, defeated invaders, but he died uh, two years after. And was succeeded by his son, Olimi Mukabirele II. By that time, Kavalega, the king of Bunyoro, had become a stronger king, had got stronger forces which was normally known as Avarusura. After the death of Nyeka, the king of Toro, Kavalega knew that now Toro is weak. There and then, Kavalega declared a terrible war against Toro kingdom. He fought King Mkabre, defeated him, and he exiled him in eastern Uganda in Umsoga, where he died from. So finally, Kavalega, the king of Bunyoro, regained his Toro kingdom and restored it back to Bunyoro Kital again. Now realize, realizing Kavalega's determination to win the Toro Kingdom, Babito, Royal Kranidas of Toro, decided to send uh, Prince Kasagama to Ankole for saving him from Kavalega. This Kasagama is the great grandfather of King Oyo, the reigning king of Toro. So they sent him to Ankole, and Kasagama went by Ankole and went hid himself in the Buganda Kingdom. He was overcoming the Buganda by the king of Buganda, Kabaka Mwanga and gave him accommodation in his kingdom in Masaka. So Kasakama stayed in Masaka almost 15 years. But around 1885, Uganda received two British men, Major Sergeant Porto, who came with his friend, Captain Frederick Logat. They came in Uganda, they're known as the Imperial British East African Company. When those two British men are in Uganda kingdom, so they gave them information that our country Uganda here is the monarch country. But being a monarch country, we have problems. Those cultural leaders, those kings, they are fighting each other. So they gave them an example of the king Kavalega. Bunyoro Kitaro came and fought this king and exiled him in his kingdom. So they went and met him, and met him in, in Buganda kingdom in Masak. They restricted of getting him power from Buganda kingdom of Amboa. Assisted the Masonara forces from Sudan. 
which is in Ubiano community of Tor now. So they came via Kasese, they fought Kavalegas first, they defeated them, so they brought Bata Kasagama in Tor Kingdom, it was around 18 and 1. So the family came back this year, it became the King of Tor, because his father was already passed away when in Soga in Excel. It's why you see the whole of Uganda, only Kavala district here is only one district of a town with an English name, Fort Porto. So they got the name Fort Porto in two things. The word Fort, they got it from here. Uh, where are you Either over there? Uh, on the other hill, you can see something like a playground. That is the golf course. And it's where Fort is. It's where those people were planted their troops. It's where they used to fight Kavalega from. It's where they go to the word Fort. And they go to the word Porto in the name of Sajia de Porto. So they got the name for Porto of this town. And also they have to name one of the cities in town here, Lugard Street, after Captain Fredrik Lugard. And when you are entering this town of Porto from Cassis on your right, there is a monument of someone holding a gun. That is the monument of Sajia de Porto. All those things were put in place to remember the good job of those two British men, Sajia de Porto and his friend, Captain Fredrik Lugard. Now, after Kasagama being brought back in Toro Kingdom, 1891, uh, when we go to 1896, as uh, during that time, our country, Uganda, we are no schools, no hospitals, no religions. But missionaries are in Uganda, but in the Uganda Kingdom only. Now, our King Kasagama, Chiyabamba got interested uh, to be converted in Christianity. And a man walked from here, men and men up to Kampana Mirembe, to be converted in Christianity and was baptized on 20th March 1896 by Bishop Francis Tucker. And when he was coming back from Buganda, he came with those missionaries from Buganda to his kingdom here. And he, yes, uh, which means Christian education started in his reign. Ikiyengura, that in our language, uh, now, uh, Kasagama, when he was coming back, he came with those missionaries from Buganda to his kingdom here. He came with them, it was in three groups. It was teachers, preachers, and doctors. And when they got here, many people were informed about Christian education and health. Now, our king got interested to stay with them, his people to learn more. The way to stay with them, it was one to give them land. They constructed six hundred churches, schools, and hospitals. Had to give out the land. His palace was where you hear people preaching that side. That time, our palace was that side. So, our king gave out that land to missionaries. Is why that place that constructed school for girls, which was named after him, okay. Chebambe Girls. And up to now, that school is the best school for girls in Toro Kingdom here. At this point, we said enough of the history lessons and we decided to ask questions of what we exactly wanted to know when we were heading to the palace. My colleagues and I share exactly what we learned and the answers we got after asking. Yo, hi everyone. We're back here and we're now at Toro Kingdom, the real palace. That is where the headquarters of the kingdom are. So I'm here with my, uh, with my subscriber, Maria, like you've seen her in the previous episodes. She's going to be giving us a little bit of history of what she's learned. Say hello to my subscribers. Hi. Yo. Hi guys. We're still on with the trip. Mr. Musinguzi, follow him, like his page and uh, keep getting live feeds about this. Well, we're currently at Toro Kingdom and uh, we've learned a lot about the culture. Uh, some of us are not from Toro, but we are very diverse. And uh, learning about this broadens our understanding, our knowledge, and you can only get this when you follow Mr. Musinguzi. Get everything live. Okay guys, you're most welcome to Mr. Musinguzi's YouTube channel. We're here in Toro Kingdom and it's, guess what, it's just amazing, amazing what we have learned today. I've been hearing about Omsaija Tayangwa and man, this phrase was so exciting. We came to know that the Batoros don't refuse any man. But today we got the right analogy in the kingdom and they are telling us it was the great, great aunties teaching our dear wives in Toro not to misbehave at home. When you've quarreled with a man, it, may, it doesn't mean that you refuse the man when it comes to his official duties. So that is the origin of Omsaija Tayangwa, but it doesn't mean that... Uh, a Mutoro woman cannot say no to a man. So that analogy of the previous uh, ancient ages that we've been following Tom Saja Tayangwa is truly so, so, so wrong. Today we get it from the source and we're right here in Toro Kingdom. Mr. Musinguzi, big up for the fact. So after learning that much about the kingdom, we requested to go and see the parliament of the kingdom and that is where we are headed right now. No. 
So we are here at the Parliament of uh, Toro Kingdom. I'm going to see behind me is the building of the Parliament of Toro Kingdom. I'm going to be checking you on the inside so that you can see what exactly is in the Parliament of Toro Kingdom. Uh, very peaceful uh, kingdom. We've got to know a lot of history about the kingdom. And I'm going to be showing you the details. So just keep it on Mr. Singh's channel. If you need me to visit a particular place and you want me to do it on my channel, just leave a comment. I'll make sure I do my best to add it onto my to-do list so that by the end of this coming year, I'll visit the place that you want me to see in Uganda. As I told you, we are at the Parliament of Toro Kingdom, and what we are seeing here is one of the oldest items in this in this Parliament. And this used to be a chair of the king. I'm yet to find out the official name of this chair, and it belonged to Omukama Kaboyo Olimi. More details coming your way. Thank you so much for the support. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing because I'm bringing you lots lots of content. Today I'm in Fort Porto. Next time you never know which town I'm going to be. Next time you never know what beauty I'm going to be showing you. But it's all happening here on Mr. Msinguzi's YouTube channel. Blessings.